every Wednesday night. Up next, High Octane Motorsport features off-road highlights. The Tusk Resort in Mabatu was the base for the recent O'Hagan's Kapanong Hotel 500. Round 5 of the hotly contested MSA Off-Road Car Championship. 31 special vehicles and 33 production vehicles entered for the event, which included a 35km time trial to determine the starting order for Saturday's main event. Organized by the Muffa Gang Motor Club, the event has a reputation for being one of the fastest on the national calendar. While the Ford, Nissan, Mitsubishi and Toyota Works teams were out in force, there were a few privateer teams that could upset the apple cart, notably among them the Jeep, Land Rover and N1 4x4 teams. As always, there were the last minute preparations and documentation to attend to before proceedings got underway. There's just no stopping the father and son team of Franz Chepek Senior and Junior. They have won the special vehicle category four times in a row this season and built up an almost unassailable lead. We need uh, one more good run or one more win and uh, we must probably clinch the championship. So we're in a nice relaxing position, but uh, nevertheless we always box on and we'd like to possibly add another victory. So we're going to go for it, we're going to see what we can do. O'Hagan's directors John Weir Smith and Jeff Minnett have had an up and down season but are nevertheless in a comfortable second place in Class A of the Special Vehicle Championship. I think the event's going to be quite difficult uh, in that it's a very, very, very fast race. I think they're talking about uh, an average of close to 100 kilometers an hour. Um, I don't know whether they're going to be able to slow the cars down. There's quite a few cars that have got uh, a lot of horsepower here. You've got Shamir Variawa running about 580 horsepower. Um, these sort of cars are going to have a huge advantage uh, for this particular race. I think if we need to just keep it on the road and, and uh, just be consistent, I think we'll do well. Jimco's dominate the top placings and reigning Class B champion Hill Nell has a comfortable lead in the Class B championship in the Look Africa Truggy. Shumi Van Vieren has been toppled from his pedestal by Bucks Carolyn, who's moved into the production vehicle championship lead after consistent performances in the works Mitsubishi Pajero. Well, we've been consistent and uh, we've had four races, four finishes. So uh, we had to win uh, the war, not the battles. And, uh, I'm very happy with, uh, with, uh, with the car at the moment. Uh, just, we just wait for our chance. It's so competitive in the T1 class that any car can really win. I mean, there's nine cars there that can win the race, so we're just going to take our chances, and if our luck comes off, we'll win a race, but we're going to be there anyway. All the time, the guys know it. A class win in the Mitsubishi Barber's Band 500 and consistent finishes in the other events sees Privateer could see a Lavascafe in a commanding position and the highly competitive Class E for four-cylinder buckies. Are we going full out this year? It's much more difficult for the privateers to get anywhere, you know, it's quite expensive sport and everything and we rely on quite a variation of sponsors to keep us there. But yeah, we hope it's going to go well and uh, we aim to finish uh, as well as we can get around in this race. I hope it's got to be quite fast, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Von Heeren trails Carolyn by a mere two points, with the other contenders for the championship crown, Pitt Hasbrook and Hannes Frobler, 26 and 30 points behind the leader, respectively. Nissan entered a Class D hard body for West Bank V8 and international sports car star, Gary Formato. Formato would be standing in for an injured Mike Griffiths. It's fantastic. It's better than sitting at home on the weekend, and uh, what's more, to come with a fantastic team like Nissan, and uh, for them to give me the opportunity is great, and uh, looking forward to it. Got an experienced navigator in Mark, uh, Mark Griffiths. So uh, I'm going to listen to him. He's going to be my eyes. And I'm just going to drive the thing as fast as I can with, uh, without bending it, hopefully. The time trial was run in class order with a Class T Super Trucks first off the line. Reigning champions Neil Woolridge and Kenny Skoltammer got last and would start 57. Avi Reinecke and Robin Houghton got it all wrong in the Casper Toyota Land Cruiser. And instead of sticking to the road, they charged through a donga and found themselves without gears. Not a good start to the event for the former champions who've had a dismal season so far. Luchtenberg 400 winners Cliff Barker and Malcolm Hubert were on a mission with their prime objective being to beat the much fancied works teams in their privately entered Barker Performance Products Land Rover. A bit frustrating, we sort of came up the first turn over here um, when Arpi went down in the gear, uh, just suddenly we had no drive again. It seems to be the same problem as we had on the desert race. Um, a bit frustrating, obviously we thought we'd found the solution. 
On board with former drag star Hanil de Villiers in the Nissan Hardbody as he passes Barker who had picked up a puncture which would see him start 58. The talented youngster has one win under his belt but could count on huge pressure from his veteran teammate Hannes Wobler in a similar V6 powered vehicle. Wobler too has one win to his credit this season. Third fastest in Class T was the Monster Vacation Vans Jeep of Stratford Wirth and Scott Abraham. The 5.9 litre V8 power truck has been on the pace all year, but frustratingly has been sidelined by minor mechanical problems. The Class A special vehicles were up next with reigning special vehicle drivers champion Shamir Bariawa and co-driver Zahir Badania leading the way in the V6 powered Corn Bake Foods Jimco. They would start in second place on Saturday. Father and son team Gary and Bodo Berthold were out in the locally built m and &E Glass Dirtco, which is powered by a Nissan V6 engine similar to that in the Class D Nissan Hardbodies. Championship leaders Franz Chebek Sr. and Jr. are a formidable combination in the Porsche-powered V-Motors Chenoweth and maintained a steady pace to post the fifth fastest time in the time trial. Former Nissan touring car driver Duncan Fast and radio celebrity co-driver Jonathan Cramp set a blistering pace in the Class D Valid Value Nissan and would start in 8th place on Saturday. The newcomers to Class B, Henry Kirstein and René Wuster, powered their newly acquired DDS Sandmaster to the fastest time in Class B and would start 19th the following day. A welcome return to form saw Andrew and Chris Birkin dominate Class E in the Castro Toyota Hilux. They would start eight positions ahead of their nearest rival in Class E. Five special vehicles and five production vehicles in the top ten, with Peniel de Villiers posting the overall fastest time. Shamir Variawa would be the first special vehicle away the following day. Another of those early morning starts, so common in South African off-road racing, awaited competitors. To add to their discomfort, it was bitterly cold, and for anyone running from the second position down, Dust and poor visibility would be a major problem. The routes um, it's changed a lot uh, um, as to last year. Last year was a lot faster. Um, the guys didn't uh, appreciate that very much. Um, this year we've changed it quite uh, drastically. It's very similar to the motorbike route we had um, beginning of the year. Um, obviously they couldn't go into some of the technical sections which we, uh, we took that out. Um, there's a top six top loop which is about 40, 50 k's. Very similar to the, de in fact identical to the desert. Um, as we just border on the Kalahari Desert here. So the, it's going to be an open race. It's going to give the productions and the specials. Each one is going to have a fair chance of, of doing well tomorrow. So it's not just going to be flat out for the faster production vehicles. Running first on the road gave Hanil de Villiers and co-driver Francois Jordan in the Nissan Hardbody a distinct advantage over the rest of the chasing pack. But they would be faced with having to clear the route for the rest of the field. Shamir Variawa and Zahir Budanya also had an edge over the rest of the field in that they only had the Nissan's dust to contend with. The Corn Bay Foods Jimco sounded sweet in the crisp morning air. Chasing hard were father and son pair Bodo and Gary Berthold in the m and &E Glass Dirtco, but they would eventually be forced into retirement when a break this came loose. On board with Hannes Wobler and Richard Leake in the Nissan Hardbody Super Truck. The veteran pair won the Mitsubishi Barberspan 500 and were intent on making up for a disappointing non-finish on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race. The Chepex were comfortably placed in fifth position. Franz Senior starts the race and Franz Junior takes over at the midway point, a strategy that has paid off handsomely for the talented duo in the past. John Weir-Smith and Jeff Minnett couldn't have enjoyed having to race in choking dust. They had started six in the O'Hagan's Kopenong Hotel Jimco and were playing a waiting game at this early stage of the race. Brothers Lawrence and Harrod Duplessis were on their customary charge in the newly liveried Porsche-powered Chenoweth that was previously raced by Shamir Bariawa. Leading Class D were Duncan Foss and Jonathan Cramp in the Valid Value Nissan Hardbody, but they had Shumi van Vieren and Varney Kotze in the Castro Toyota Land Cruiser closing in rapidly. Van Puren has three class wins to his credit this season. The vacation van's Jeep had moved up a place to 10th overall after only five minutes of racing. 
Straff had worked and co-driver Scott Abraham had one aim in mind, and that was to finish at all costs. The ex-Dakar Mitsubishi Pajero, with reigning special vehicle co-driver's champion Bucks Carolyn behind the wheel, has performed consistently, but has yet to win a race this season. Reigning Class D champions Hein Hobler and Harald Prinsloo have had two non-finishes in the valid value Nissan Hardbody this season, which has dashed their hopes of retaining the title. Newcomers to Class B, Henry Kirstein and René Riester, had an early grip on the glass in the ex Niels Ericsson Genoeth that won the class on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race. 45 minutes into the race and there was a traffic jam at a Marshall Point with cars arriving thick and fast. Among those was Neil Woolridge and Kenny Skoldhammer in the Ford Ranger. They'd started 57th and had already moved up to 28th place. Bevan Berthold and Brandon Harkis started 60th and after an hour of racing had made up 28 places. Henry and Maurice Samatten had moved up from 63rd to 35th place on the road in the Sony PlayStation Pajero. Both the Barker and Malcolm Hubert, who started 58, were now running 37th overall in the BMW M3 powered Land Rover. On board with Hannes Wobler and Richard Leake in the Nissan Hardbody. Listen carefully. The gearbox self-destructed and forced the pair into early retirement. Yes, we had some bad luck. Uh, it's now three in a row, uh, two off-roads and one rally, so I hope it's now finished. Uh, the, the bad luck, the worst of the whole thing is probably our championship. Uh, I think the chances are very slim that we'll uh, win the championship this year. We'll give it a go in the last few off-roads, uh, but uh, I think it was really bad luck for us for, for the championship. Drama too in the Mitsubishi camp as technicians work frantically to repair Carolyn's Pajero. The delay would put the team out of contention for a podium finish. The dip went off to 15 k's and we decided rather to come back here and to fix it than carry on there because we only had front wheel drive and uh, it was pointless going on because the next thing the front dip will go. So we came back here, we knew we had a spare dip, it's going to take us an hour and a half to fix it. But at least we'll get back into the race, we'll have no dust and we'll be there, we're going to go and chase those oaks. On board with race leaders Hanil de Villiers and Francois Jordan in the Nissan Hardbody Super Truck. Having to clear the route at high speed is enough for crews to have to contend with, let alone having to avoid stray cattle. Holding on to second place and the special vehicle lead were Shamir Bariawa and Zahir Badanya. The Johannesburg-based cousins are also part of a new breed of young, up-and-coming competitors who are starting to put their stamp of authority on off-road racing. Diamond prospectors, Lawrence and Harrod Duplessis from Swizerenica, were mounting a challenge and were well-placed behind special vehicle leader, Bariawa. Fourth on the road and third in the special vehicle category was exactly where the Chepex wanted to be at the stage of the race. The thick sand proved to be a problem for many of the two-wheel drive vehicles. Yagi Hubert had his wife, Almery, in the co-driver's seat and the pair had moved up 11 places into fifth after two and a half hours of racing. Woolridge and Skoldhammer had made up 51 places in the V8-powered Ford Ranger and were sixth overall and second in the production vehicle category. A phenomenal performance. Running strong and leading Class D were Shumi Van Vieren and Vani Kotze in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. But mere seconds behind them were Hein Hobler and Harald Prinsloo in the Class D Valid Value Nissan Hardbody. The third place Class D entry was the Patronus Isuzu of Mark Corbett and Juan Moore, fresh from a class win in the Toyota 1000 Desert Race. What happened? A bunch of we came out from the sand here. Bad luck for Hein Hobler. Time lost with this puncture would cost him a potential class win. Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smallberg had moved up to 10th overall after starting 46 in the Lexus V8-powered N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. Newcomers to off-road racing, Mark Ferguson and Blackie Swart, were having a steady run in the Drinks Galore Chinowit and lying fifth in the Special Vehicles category. The designated service point and midway through the O'Hagan's Kopenong Hotel 500 and there was a new race leader. Shamir Bariawa and Zahir Bradania had got by Hanil de Villiers and Francois Jordan. 
A great performance from the reigning special vehicle driver's champion. The service crew set to work replacing the right front wheel which had a slow puncture and after a quick refuel they were on their way again. Second overall and leading the production vehicle category was the Nissan hardbody of Peniel de Villiers and Francois Jordan. A routine pit stop followed with the crew only having to refuel the Nissan, replace a flat wheel and clean the windscreen. No, so far all right. Uh, one flat tire, but otherwise it's going well. I think there are two guys ahead of us, but um, one. one guy. Uh, but so far so good. Next into the service point with the Chefex in the V-Motors Chenoweth. Woolridge and Skullhammer were now lying fourth overall and second in the production vehicle category. Yeah, we've been pushing quite hard, but the, the dust has been really bad. But uh, I must say everyone's been pretty good in moving over and uh, we're going to push hard these next 250 coats. Good luck. Class D leader Shumi Van Piran had a trouble-free run, but was being chased hard by Mark Corbett in the Patronus Isuzu. Van Piran was determined to finish well and regain the championship lead, but a delay in the pit saw him lose the Class D lead to Corbett. The chase was now on. Yucky and Elmeri Hubert moved up to third in the special vehicle category in the Jojo Tanks Beetle, which is powered by a turbocharged Baldo engine. Weigeld and Smallberger occupied fifth place in the production vehicle category in the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. A puncture dropped Hein Probler from first to third in Class D. A slow pit stop for Weigeld allowed Probler to make up a place in the pits and set off in pursuit of the Toyota and the Isuzu. Weir, Smith and Minnett were experiencing ball joint problems on the O'Hagan's Copenhagen Hotel Jimco. They had dropped down the order and were running fourth overall in the special vehicle category. The Zomatten brothers, Henry and Maurice, were having a great run in the Sony PlayStation Pajero after starting second last. But Ed Barger and Hubert breathing down their necks. Dust. So cool. Look, some guys haven't got lights. So you end up with a dust behind, you know, the wind blowing towards you and you can't see anything. Now it's difficult. The vacation van's jeep had got stuck in a riverbed and Perth and Abraham had to wait for ages before someone towed them out. A leaking steering box seal forced them to retire at the service point. Class E leaders Andrew and Chris Birkin were no longer under threat. Class E championship leader Manfred Schroeder had retired the Ford Ranger and could see a Cockney was experiencing gearbox problems. Kirstein and Juster in the DDS Sandmaster had a commanding lead in Class B at the midway point. Problems for Kelsey Kutzier, who had been having a great run in the Class E, Castrol Dreo to Condor. We are so The Condor eventually fired, and Kutzier and co-driver Aki Fari were on their way again. Almost five hours into the race, and Variawa and Bodania were still in the lead in the Cornbake Foods Jimco. Second overall and leading the production vehicle category were De Villiers and Jordan in the spectacular Nissan Hardbody. Fourth overall, second in the production vehicle category, and leading Class D were Corbett and Moore in the Patronus Isuzu. A back-to-back -back class win seemed to be on the cards. Still leading Class E were the Birkins, whose closest challengers were the Condor of Kutsia and Fari, the Toyota Hiluxes of Jean Pierre Hubert and Errol Hudson, and Hugo and Jan de Brain. Kirstein and Juster were uncatchable in Class B, but behind them a battle was raging between Gavin Gray and Graham Cunningham, and Dion Besaidenote and Hill Nell. Another lead change, and this time De Villiers and Jordan are back at the head of the pack in the Nissan Hardbody. The popularity of the spectacular super trucks is without question. New special vehicle category leaders, the Jepex, with France Jr. at the wheel, had moved into the lead in the V Motors Chenoweth, and five consecutive victories now seemed a reality. A giant killing performance saw Mark Corbett and Juan Moore move up to third overall, second in the production vehicle category, and the Class D lead in the Patronus Isuzu. 
Varyawa and Vidanya lost the lead when the Corn Bay Foods Jimco became entangled in a barbed wire fence, costing them valuable time. Neil Woolridge and Kenny Skoltham had taken the Ford Ranger from 57th to 5th overall and 3rd in the production vehicle category. Another consistent performance from this veteran pair, who are also former off-road motorcycle champions. Nissan Bear, Hein Probler and Ferrard Prinsloo had managed to get past Chumi Van Piren and Barney Kotzer in the Castro Toyota Land Cruiser. Van Piren and Kotzer were content to run third in Class D because of the points they could earn would once again see them at the top of the production vehicle championship lot. Veteran Cliff Barker and Malcolm Hubert moved from 58th to 8th overall and 6th in the production vehicle category in the Barker Performance Products Land Rover and managed to get ahead of Henry and Marisa Matten in the Sony PlayStation Pajero who had started 63rd. 10th overall and 3rd in the special vehicle category. Husband and wife team Yaki and Almarie Joubert in the Jojo Tanks Beetle, which is one of the crowd pleasing vehicles in off-road racing. With less than half an hour of racing left, Daniel de Villiers and Francois Jordan had the race firmly in their grip. De Villiers' dream of winning the race in which he made his off-road debut last year seemed to be a reality. The relatively smooth, open terrain certainly suited the high-powered Nissan Hardbody well. A record-breaking five special vehicle category wins in a row seem to be on the cards for the Chepex. Just look at how the suspension on the V-Motors Chenoweth absorbs the rough terrain. There was no stopping Mark Corbett and Juan Moore and the Class D Patronus Isuzu. The former special vehicle driver has come to grips with the handling of the Isuzu, which is vastly different to the Jim Goey he raced last year. Kasi Kutia and Oki Fari had no answer for Class E leaders Andrew and Chris Birkin and had to be content with second in what has become a highly competitive class. Kirstein and Juste still lead Class B, but Gavin Gray and Graham Cunningham got the better of the other Class B contenders to move into second place. The finish and overall victory to Hanil de Villiers and Francois Jordan in the Nissan Hardbody. Especially the second loop was, was absolutely awesome. Um, we had no problems whatsoever and it's just, uh, it's very, very nice to win this event because it was my first one last year. A record-breaking five consecutive special vehicle category victories for Franz Jebek Sr. and Jr. and the venerable V Motors Chenoweth. It was very fast racing. The, the route not particularly suited to the, the vehicle that we have. Um, very, very smooth sort of terrain, not, not rough enough uh, to show the true potential of the, the space frame vehicles, but um, nevertheless still a good result and um, we're very happy. Third overall, second in the production vehicle category and the Class D win for Mark Corbett and Juan Moore in the Patronus Isuzu. Yeah, it was a tough race this one and lucky for us the second win in a row and we had a bit of trouble this race, the whole last loop we didn't have third gear. So we're lucky to come in. The Class E victory went to Andrew and Chris Birkin, who led the class from start to finish, and the Castro Dreo to Hilux. We had to get it because we had two non-finishes in a row, the last three events, so we had to win the class to give our championships hope, our championship points some hope, so uh, we're happy. Uh, Bucky the Hilux went very well. The route was very nice, fast in some places, but exceptionally, exceptionally good. A debut win in Class B for Henry Kirstein and Rene Riester. It was a lucky day, and it was fantastic we really enjoyed it and we had no problems with the car we never stopped for no problems so it was a clean run and we were really chuffed about it the special vehicle results highlight five class a and five class b finishes in the top 10 with a historic win for the chepex and one of the closest battles seen this season in class b the production vehicle results with top honors going to de villiers jordan and nissen a charging performance from behind by Woolridge and Skullhammer, and a fine 10th overall for Gary Formato. 